Hello and welcome to our online service here at Unity Spiritual Center of Windsor, Ontario. We are so happy you could join us. My name is Judy Chandler and I am delighted to be your host for today. All of our classes and services are made possible by your generous donations and we thank you. Let's begin our service with prayer. Please take in a deep breath and become centered. This prayer is entitled, Awaken. Awaken to the innermost part of yourself, which is waiting for you. It's waiting for you to touch it, to know it, to be with it. Awaken to your soul. You're not separate from it. It is inextricably woven into the very fabric of your being. This eternal part of you is waiting patiently for you to come home to it. When you get to it and rest in it, you will feel the overwhelming love that it has for you. Wait and feel this God love washing over your internal body. This love energy pours forth and you are aglow as you soak in every bit. You are filled with love and so it is. Amen. Good morning. It's a beautiful day. Good morning, I can make it that way To have a good morning, all I have to say Is it's a good morning, cause I see it that way I woke up to cloudy skies, didn't even want to open my eyes I pulled the covers way up and over my head I took a breath and realized I'm so lucky to be alive And with a smile I popped right up and said Good morning, it's a beautiful day Good morning, I can make it that way To have a good morning, all I have to say Is it's a good morning, cause I see it that way when I wake up feeling good And everything goes just as it should It's not hard to call it a wonderful day And even when I'm feeling down I can easily turn it around I just have to stop myself and say Oh, good morning It's a beautiful day Good morning I can make it that way to have a good morning, all I have to say is it's a good morning, cause I see it that way. It's a good morning, cause I create it that way. Good morning. I love this joyful, lively tune. What a great way to start the day. Thank you, B.A. Huffman. At this time, let us take to heart our vision, mission, and statement of being, which is shown on the screen. We have a global vision, which is a world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of shared spiritual awakening. We have a sacred mission, which is we inspire and empower spiritual growth to awaken us and transform the world. And we have a personal statement of being, which is, I am a dynamic center of the Christ light, mighty to unfold my good and radiate that good to all. Our affirmation for this month is, the power of my thoughts and words moves me ever closer to the truth of my being. Would you repeat that with me, please? 
the power of my thoughts and words moves me ever closer to the truth of my being. And so it is. Amen. And now, Reverend David will give us his message for today, the key to joy, after which he will lead us in a meditation. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our online service here at Unity Spiritual Center of Windsor. I'm Reverend David Old, and I am the senior minister here, and we're so glad that you can join us today. So before we start, like I always like to do, let's just take a moment and take a couple of deep breaths. And as we take these deep breaths, we allow ourselves to, to feel our, make ourselves present, present to this moment, present to this place, present to this time. And as we allow ourselves to rest here just for a moment, we allow ourselves to feel the presence of spirit, the presence of spirit within each and every one of us that we live and that we move and that we have our being in. So just take a moment to acknowledge the presence of spirit. Acknowledge our oneness with that spirit and our oneness with each other. And we just take one more last deep breath. And so it is, amen. Well, today is our, uh, our topic is joy. Uh, how many of you out there could use more joy in your life? Well, I know I could. So today we're going to be exploring joy and some of the things that we can do to enable us to experience more joy in our lives. But before we do that, let's review some of the things that we, we have been exploring uh, for this past month. This whole year, we are exploring Charles Fillmore's book, The Twelve Powers of Man. Fillmore defined the 12 powers as abilities, attributes, faculties, or capacities that he believed form the basis of our Christ consciousness. They are divine ideas that constitute the patterns of perfection within us. The more we develop them, the closer we are to expressing the Christ, our true being, our divine nature. And we develop these powers by using them and expressing them. Just as we do not come into the world as infants with fully developed muscles, the potential is there, but it must be developed by exercise and use. And the same is true for the 12 powers. Each month this year, we are exploring one of the 12 powers. And this month we, we are exploring the power of dominion, which is more commonly known as the power of power. It's our ability to master, have dominion and control over our ideas, thoughts, feelings, and passions. This is so very important to us because as our basic unity principle number three states, we are creating our life experiences through our way of thinking and feeling. So as we noted in last Sunday's lesson, it's essential that we claim, use, and develop our power of dominion because we are creating our experiences through the thoughts and feelings we maintain and hold in our consciousness. At the level of consciousness, the activity of our thoughts and feelings is an ongoing, virtually perpetual process. While we may slow this activity down through the practice of si silent meditation, as long as we are alive, we are constantly thinking and feeling our way through our lives. Our emotional life is the effect and consequences of the thoughts and the feelings that predominate in our consciousness. As I noted last week, the quality of our emotional life is a good indicator of our spiritual progress. 
However, it is our spiritual li- our, it is our spiritual life that ultimately determines the quality of our emotional experience. Now would be a good time to speak our affirmation for May. So each month this year, we do have a special affirmation, and our affirmation this month is the power of my thoughts and words moves me ever closer to the truth of my being. Will you repeat that with me? The power of my thoughts and words moves me ever closer to the truth of my being. By using this month's affirmation periodically throughout the day, we remind ourselves that our thoughts and words have power. And we remind ourselves that we have the power to choose which thoughts and words we allow to take root in our consciousness. And it affirms that as we use our power of dominion, we move ever closer to embodying and expressing the Christ within us, the truth of who we are. So the, today, the word that we're going to allow to take root in our consciousness is joy. Unity founders Charles and Myrtle Fillmore believed God was a God of joy. Fillmore wrote, true and lasting joy arises from within. In his book, Jesus Christ Heals, he wrote, we shall all, we should all practice delightful, happy, joyous states of mind. It is such thoughts that open the way for ever-present God mind to pour out his splendid resources into our mind and through us into all of our affairs. I also believe that joy is within us. It is at the very core of our spiritual essence, and, and we experience it to the degree that we become conscious of it. Now, you may be thinking, well, what's the difference between joy and happiness? Well, I was I was looking as I was doing my my homework and preparing my talk. I ran across a a, a little writing that was on the Compassion International website. That's a Christian child advocacy ministry that pairs up compassionate people with children living in uh, extreme poverty. Uh, They get sponsors for the children. And there's actually over 8,000 international church partners that work with this organization. And they have already sponsored over 1.9 million children. So this was on their website, and I liked it, so I'm going to share it with you. The difference between joy and happiness lives in the mind and heart. Joy is a little word. Happiness is a bigger word. Joy is in the heart. Happiness is on the face. Joy is of the soul. Happiness is of the moment. Joy transcends. Happiness reacts. Joy embraces peace and contentment waiting to be discovered. Joy runs deep and overflows, while happiness hugs hello. Joy is a practice and a behavior. It's deliberate and intentional. Happiness comes and goes blithely along its way. Joy is profound and scriptural. Don't worry, rejoice. Happiness is a balm. Don't worry, be happy. Joy is an inner feeling. Happiness is an outward expression. Joy endures hardship and trials and connects us with meaning and purpose. A person pursues happiness but chooses joy. I think we would all agree that joy, that happy, buoyant emotion, is a great feeling whether it's brought on by big life events uh, like a wedding or birth or something as simple as being kept captivated by a bird song. You know, joy can 
move you so quickly that a that a cascade of other, other emotions show show up you know happiness delight awe wonder and even relief or sadness on a emotional level we may feel joy in a variety of ways tearfully we've all heard of tears of joy euphorically with a deep sense of contentment in many more ways. You know, science tells us that we feel joy in our neurotransmitters, which are tiny chemical uh, messenger cells that transmit signals between neurons and nerves and other bodily cells. And these new neurotransmitters are responsible for processes and feelings in almost uh, every aspect of the body, from blood flow to digestion. And we feel joy in our bodies because of the release of dopamine and serotonin, two types of neurotransmitters in the brain. And both of these chemicals are heavily associated with happiness. In fact, people with clinical depression often have lower levels of serotonin. So, you know, there's so many scientific reports that have, that have been done in studies. And these studies are pointing to just many benefits of being able to feel joy. Some of the, the uh, benefits are it promotes a healthier lifestyle. It boosts our immune system. It fights stress and pain. It even supports longevity. So did you know that smiling can trick your brain by, by elevating your mood, lowering your heart rate, and reducing your stress. The smile doesn't even have to be based on real emotion because faking it works as well. I thought that was interesting. So if you're feeling down, you know, simple activities like going for a walk in nature, petting a dog or a cat, kissing a loved one, and, and yes, even forcing yourself to smile can help your neurotransmitters do their job and raise your mood. For many of us, joy is reserved for the bigger events of life, weddings, births, landmark graduations, major achievements like finishing a marathon or passing a bar exam, getting a call that you've got that, you, that you've uh, waited for for a long time, letting you know that you just got a job, or your book has just been published. And some people feel or, or can recall feeling joyful at the first moment they saw the Grand Canyon or, or got their glimpse, the first glimpse of the Alps. But joy often surprises us. It's a moment that we're taken off guard uh, from our mental, emotional, and physical routines or habits. I recall vividly a one one time when I was in seminary studying to get my master's of divinity and and I was right in the midst of of uh, working on my term papers and I had been working all through the night so I go downstairs and and grab a cup of coffee and decide to go out uh, onto the patio I lived there right on campus overlooking the creek so I got my coffee and as I walked out on, onto the patio, I, I was literally stunned by the sky that greeted me. I froze. <laughs> I, I stared at the breathtaking beauty of the cloud formations, layered in red, pink, and yellow hues as sunrise approached. And, you know, it, it truly looked like the whole sky was ablaze. You know, just thinking of it right now fills me with the uh, real joy. All was quiet and still, and I just stood there for moments, just staring. My next thought was how extraordinary it was to be alive and part of the universe. As it goes with feelings, this led to another feeling one of gratitude for this speck of time, a sense of knowing I was part of this vast, majestic universe. And that was followed by just awe. 
a total sense of awe. Well, after a few moments, I ran upstairs to get my cell phone and ran back downstairs to capture what I could of the glory and joy that I had just witnessed. You know, I've, I've never really been much into photography, never really cared to be carrying a camera around, but now that we have iPhones, they're sort of right there. So I take a few more pictures and I'm so glad that I had my phone then and I took, I took several pictures. And this is one of the pictures that I took, which I think will give you a glimpse of what I saw. And I'm happy to be able to share it with you. Joseph Campbell wrote, participate joyfully in the sorrows of the world. We cannot cure the world of sorrows, but we can choose to live in joy. Our experience of the world is defined by the way we perceive things. We can choose to dwell on sorrows or to fight them through joy. We can decide to be miserable about the bad things or to focus our energy on celebrating the good things. The Buddha said that when the mind is pure, joy follows like a shadow that never leaves. Joy has something very pure and innocent about it. it. It's a feeling that reminds us of the of the innocence of childhood and, and all of its end, endless pleasures. A pure mind open to the charm of the world can find joy everywhere. The American poet Emily Dickinson wrote, find ecstasy in life. The mere sense of living is joy enough. You know, life has the potential of being amazing, amazing once we concentrate on deciphering all of its wonderful subtleties, nuances, and details. If we pay attem attention, we can find joy and ecstasy in the most simple things or in the most unusual experiences. The poet Cahill Gibran wrote these words. He says, there are those who give with joy and that joy is their reward. There are people, as you have probably noticed, that are always grumpy, even when good things happen to them. And at the, at the same time, there are people who emanate joy and kindness, no matter the hardships that they face. And the secret is that people who spread joy receive even more joy instead. And the poet Rumi said, when you do things from your soul, you feel a river moving in you, joy. One of the richest sources of joy is getting totally emerged in, in an activity and putting all your soul and talent into it. The joy of creating or accomplishing something can give us an incredible boost of power. Frederick William Barber who was a theologian in the early 19th century, said that there are souls in this world who have the gift of finding joy everywhere and leaving it behind them when they go. You know, one of the greatest things about joy is that it is contagious. Joyful people spread joy all around them, almost as if, it, as if they would offer it as a gift. And they see joy everywhere and they multiply it by their own existence. And then Mother Teresa, she said, a joyful heart is a normal result of a heart burning with love. She gives most who gives with joy. You know, joy and love sustain each other endlessly. Hearts full of love emanate joy while, while joy speaks of love. Love gives us in endless reasons to be joyful and makes us want to share the joy with the whole world. In John 15, verses 10 through 12, Jesus speaks these words. He says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. 
these things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. As I bring my talk to a close, let's look at seven things that enable us to live a more joyful life. Number one, mindful awareness. Not all awareness is mindful. Uh, I may be aware that I'm feeling jealous, but not mindful of the deeper, deeper motives for the experience. Your ability to be mindfully pre present in the moment is the foundation for experiencing more joy and a range of other resourceful emotions as well. Number two, air out your beliefs. You know, few people do a regular exploration of the beliefs that, that motivate their behavioral choices. People have elaborate beliefs about emotions often absorbed during childhood that still dominate their expectations of emotional experience. And many people don't believe joy is something that's possible or realistic to expect much of. And unfortunately, because of their beliefs, this becomes so for them. Another way, three, change the way you talk to yourself. You know, your self-talk is reflecting your beliefs all the time. Watch it. The things that you're telling yourself are either moving you closer to the possibility of, of joy or further away. Number four, allow for more creativity and self-expression. Once, once upon a time, most of us just played. Yes, we had to go to school, but we really loved it when we got to play. Remember? While we adults learn to put away childish things, our ability and desire to express our deeper selves does not die out unless we let it. Yes, it's a cliche, but learn to follow your bliss. Number five, spend time in the natural world. Ah, oh, that's something I do love to do. And that's something that I, I make an effort to do as many times during the week as I can. Dave and I recently, or actually last year we got it, and we renewed it this year, we got passes to be able to go over to the Edsel and Eleanor Ford uh, mansion and their, their vast uh, grounds over there. Uh, it's right there on the lake, and it's the, the, the grounds are just beautifully maintained. And so we really enjoy going over there and just walking and enjoying the sunshine and all of the flowers and, and uh, the, the, the lake, and all the birds. Anyway, I, I've been there already three times this week and uh, just, just for about an hour each time walking, but it's totally refreshing to the soul. So seek out the sources of what's natural to you and, and devote some time to experience it regularly. You know, perhaps it's just as simple as, as, as just looking out the window and looking at the moon and enjoying it, seeing it, truly seeing it, feeling it. Or maybe it's just opening a window and allowing yourself to really feel the breeze that's blowing through. Keep in mind that your body is part of the natural world, so attend to its delights. Number six is sharing. You know, only you know the intimate truth of where, where and how you share. Maybe it's money that you hold on to. That's a big ticket issue for many people. It may be that you are a bit greedy with how you parcel out your time with others. Many people have a hard time sharing their feelings with others. There's many tips and tricks to life. And one of them is that if we want to keep our joy alive, we must share it with everyone we love. Joy is the channel that makes hearts 
communicate with each other. And this connection is what helps joy grow. So joy is, um, is very much a byproduct of sharing it all in all form. So consider where you can give more. And number seven is gratitude. The feeling of gratitude is a great enabler of joy. Think of emotions as, as contracting your experience, like fear and greed, or expanding it. One of the most powerful aspects of developing greater mindfulness in every part of your life is, is watching how commonplace gratitude becomes. The air we breathe, the water we have to drink, the flowers in our garden, a hot shower, a warm bed, a delicious cup of tea, even a smile. We have so much to be grateful for. So remember, every moment you are present to life, joy's got a better chance of sneaking up on you. Don't miss it. Now let's prepare for our meditation. So I invite you to relax right now and bring again your attention to this present moment. And allow yourself to smile and feel how that smile changes the way you feel. Take a few deep breaths as we bring our attention and focus our attention to this present moment. And allow ourselves to feel joy. The joy that is within each and every one of us. The joy that is at the very center of our being. I invite you to rest in that joy. I invite you to feel that joy. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. The little verse I just remembered. Make a joyful noise. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We allow our body to continue to relax. And we allow ourselves to Think of some things that we are grateful for. And in that gratitude for all the many things in our life, we allow ourselves to feel joy. We open our hearts and we open our minds to the joy. We open our hearts and open our minds to the peace. We open our hearts and open our minds to the love, to all of the rich, rich blessings of spirit that are within us, ready for us to claim. And we claim whatever it is that we need right now. And as we do so, we rest for just a little while in the silence.
the loving Holy Spirit, we ask that as we go forth this week, that, that we be open in mind and heart to the joys that surround us, to all that brings us joy, to that which is within us, the joy of being. It is your gift, and we are grateful. So let us go ahead and close our meditation one more time by voicing our, uh, our affirmation for power. And that is, the power of my thoughts and words moves me ever closer to the truth of my being. One more time. The power of my thoughts and words moves me ever closer to the truth of my being. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Hi, everybody, and welcome to our living room. My name is Jan Garrett. I'm J.D. Martin. Our song today is Joy in Our Hearts. Every day is a choice to show some kindness. We all are part of one family, so connected, our hearts and spirits. I reach out for you, you reach out for me. Peace for the season, love every moment, light shines wherever we are. Faith in the darkness, hope in the sun. time to come together to count our blessings we are grateful we lift our voices in one chorus my brothers my sisters let's celebrate peace for the season love every moment light shines wherever we are
Thank you so much. Thanks so much, you guys. Stay tuned. Stay with us. We really love you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Reverend David, for today's message. Knowing that we have the power to choose joy, we can find joy in the small things. Our life can be made up of moments of pure joy in little things rather than waiting for big things. When did you last feel joy? Let's look for everyday things to be joyful for. A bird, a breeze, the sun and warmth. Joy begets joy. Let's find it and spread it and reap the benefits of a more joyful life. Thank you, Jan Garrett and J.D. Martin, for sharing your beautiful song, Joy in Our Hearts. Love the inspiring words in this song. Such a happy tune. I was swinging and swaying right along with you. As we continue with our service, we want to thank all of you out there who continue to support this ministry with your time and generous donation of tithes and love offerings. Especially during these challenging times, we could not continue to provide our programs and services without your support. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. It's easy to donate. We accept e-transfer or PayPal sent to Unity Center Windsor at gmail.com. You can also click the blue Donate button at the top of our website, which will take you to Canada Helps, a safe and secure site where you can make a one-time or recurring donation using a credit or debit card. Or you can send a check or money order to our office. For further information, visit our website at www. Dot unityofwindsor.org. Again, thank you and bless you for your loving and generous support. In these interesting times here at Unity Spiritual Center of Windsor, we are exploring different ways to provide more online services, classes, and opportunities to meet virtually. Information about all of our upcoming classes and events can be found on our website at www.unityofwindsor.org. If you do not receive our weekly newsletter, please contact us and we will add you to our email list. As we come near to the end of today's service, thank you again for joining us today. Let's open our hearts and minds in gratitude as we close by speaking out loud or silently to ourselves our love offering prayer, followed by the prayer for protection. Divine love, in me and through me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. The light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God protects us. I am power. The presence of God watches over us. I am presence. Wherever we are, God is. I am divine. I would like to thank today's speaker, our very own Reverend David Old. I would also like to thank today's musicians, B.A. Huffman, Jan Garrett and J.D. Martin, and Mike Karloff for our opening and closing music. Please join us directly after this service on Zoom for fellowship and an opportunity to get to know you better. Please go to our website at www.unityofwindsor.org and hit the Zoom Classes and Meetings button. Also, Reverend David will be hosting conversations with Rev. David on Zoom after the service at 1130. Everyone is invited to attend. 
Reverend David always has informative and uplifting conversations. Again, please go to our website for connection instructions. Thanks for joining us today, and thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your continued support. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Thank you.